Robert, we all gathered here today to pay our last respects to the deceased. It was certainly well known in the area as he had practiced for 35 years as an optician. So I think it only fitting we all stand and sing hymn number 97. I'm only on five a day. <laughs> you know, that's, that's where we ought to go, you know. Jeopardy. I've never heard of that place. What do you want to go there for? Well, it says here there's 400 jobs in Jeopardy. <laughs> Reported? Oui, mon capitaine. All that is except the Englishman. Pah. What Englishman? Pah. Oh, Mr. Nadel from Chidel. Nadel from Chidel? Well, it might be Chidel from Nadel. I'm not sure. He's English. <laughs> Where is this swine? Oh, <laughs> Droid, everything I can with a horse of yours, I've bashed it and I've belted it, but it's still as lumpy as hell. You fool, that's a camel. Is it? <laughs> I've been flogging a dead camel. <laughs> it's taken me ages to get here, you know, it's that damn bitch. Does a toy always go out as far as that? You must be the Englishman. Pa! Monsieur Nadder. My friends call me Bow. Bow Nadder? <laughs> Your chest. No, bow chest's my cousin. <laughs> I'm definitely bowed idol. What's your name? Salads, you cur. Oh, pleased to meet you, Saunders. <laughs> no, my name is Sergeant Le Peck. Le Peck, that's a butter, isn't it? <laughs> You'll never butter better if it's a butter in your mouth. <laughs> anyway, look at all the spit round here. I think I'm gonna like it here. Where's the swimming pool? The nearest water is 30 miles away. Well, I won't ask about the toilets then. <laughs> You will walk 30 miles under a hot, blazing desert sun with a full pack. We've got a bus service like that in Edge Best, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> then you'll report to the stables where you will clean out the camel's do. What's a camel do? Quite a lot. <laughs> Tell me, Nadal, why did you join the French Foreign Legion? Well, I saw it on all of the 87. Do you know, Frank <laughs> said a lot of wonderful things about you. Was that the only reason? Yeah. I've come here to forget women. Oh, honestly, they're nothing but trouble. Every time I meet one, I fall in love, and it gets so complicated, so I've come here to forget them. Yes, well, you've come to the right place, Nadel. If you want to forget, then we can help you forget. Oh, forget them, yeah. Hey, listen now, try this one, it's great. It's a new coin, yeah. It's blow dry, see that, yeah. <laughs> great, that, isn't it? So now, they've got them in all the uh, services now. Hey, oh, what was that? Is that dinner? It's the Mad Muller. Oh, God, I don't care what it is. I'm not hungry. I'll eat anything. <laughs> no, you fool. The Mad Muller is the most powerful and wealthy Arab in the whole of North Africa, so be careful what you say. Um, Mustafa Jimmy. Don't let me stop you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's his name, you fool. Mustafa Jimmy. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Jimmy. Sheikh. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Jimmy. <laughs> I am Sheikh Mustafa Jimmy. May your seed be as bountiful as the grains of sand in the desert. May the wealth of your nation multiply and increase. May the camels and goats at your door always be fruitful. By each day of the week, we'll be <laughs> may the Lord always watch over you. Silence! I have not come here for a sing-song. Tell me, do you know the radiant flower of the desert sun? No, don't know any of the pubs round here. <laughs> That's his daughter, you fool. I am looking to cement our alliance. Well, you've certainly got enough sand. <laughs> I want my most beloved daughter to marry your best man. Hey, up! It's another camel! <laughs> That's a woman, Nadal! Oh, no wonder I forgot. <laughs> I'm Nafatiti. <laughs> I bet there was a big laugh in your christening. I am Bedouin. <laughs> oh, 
win. Oh, you poor thing. I've got an auntie who's bedridden. Yeah. <laughs> I think I like this Englishman, my father. Then, my beloved daughter, he shall be yours. I am not a very Frank Buff never said nothing about this. Control <laughs> yourself, Nada. Remember, beauty is only skin deep. Yeah, but she's got more skin than most. <laughs> Each night I shall perform for you the dance of the seven veils. She's going to need horse blankets. <laughs> you don't understand, Nader. If you refuse to marry her, then the consequences could be disastrous. The shaky ear would be perfectly entitled to torture you with the lingering death of a thousand cuts. Or maybe to lop off your head. Or even to have you pulled apart by four horses. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I get your point, I get your point. I'll give it a try. <laughs> Take the flag. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd rather have the four horses. <laughs> it's good heavens, it's Fred. Hey, what the heck happened to you? It's me ears. Your ears? Yeah, my mate told me he'd taken the ladder away and I didn't hear him. That is for him, Trusher. Oh, that fellow. Hi, I'm Charlie Chin. Not Charlie Chin, the world-famous detective. If not, I have great time with his wife. <laughs> Ancient Chinese joke. Why you scream? Would you like to examine the body? Oh, thank you. <laughs> that body? Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> One thing very clear. What's that? That's not Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> Yes, who he? Oh, who he? Yes, who he? Huey. Huey? My husband. What last name? Dewey. Huey Dewey. <laughs> you? Louis. Louis? What Louis short for? Because it's only got five letters. <laughs> what does that mean? Charlie does funnies. <laughs> oh, this is your late husband. Yes, I've got an early one as well. They work different shifts. <laughs> Where's your husband? He's dead. Is he? No, Huey. <laughs> Who he? This is my lawyer. Yes, my name is. I don't wish to know that. Must ring police about body. Do we? No, Huey. Yes, Huey, do we? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> This number one son will help an investigation. Willie? How do you know his name? I don't. Oh, you just say Willie. Yes, but when I said Willie, I didn't mean Willie. I meant Willie. Oh, <laughs> oh this conversation like husband of cow. Husband of cow? Yes, one point here, one point there, and a lot of bull in between. <laughs> number one son, take photograph of body. OK, Pop. OK. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I want you to go straight to airport, fly to Honolulu, go straight home, lock door behind you, and no account contact me. Why, Pa? Because I'm sick of you. Smile. <laughs> oh, call them Bennett. <laughs> I am sorry. I only came to clean the rooms and to make the beds and to hoover the carpets and to change the towels and to give you fresh soap and to dust the body. <laughs> I'm the chambermaid. I am Gabby. You can say that again. <laughs> Don't you dare. Allow me to introduce humble self. I am Charlie Chin. Chin? Chin? A double chin suit you. <laughs> Hello. My name's Peregrine Windbucket. <laughs> Why you laugh? Well, it's such a funny name, isn't it? <laughs> Who's she? Oh, this is my fiance, Deirdre. We were going to the fancy dress ball with Louis and Huey, but he's dead. <gasps> well, I might as well be. I haven't had a line for ages. <laughs> this remind me of murder at Yumka Hotel. Yumka? Yumka. Y-M-C-A Yumka. <laughs> Still not know your name. Well, you should. I wrote you a letter. I'm Reginald Grosvenor, Fitzfavisham, Chumley Beecham, Harcourt, Mandalay. What was in the letter? Just my name. There wasn't room for anything else. <laughs> Unlike MFI furniture, pieces fit together. 
<laughs> Quarrel between Louie and Huey Dewey. Overheard by Flabby Gabby. <laughs> Why are you laughing now? Well, Flabby Gabby, that is a funny name. <laughs> You're like a Chinese bird. <laughs> ah. Louis say, you Rui, Huey Dewey. He say, Huey Dewey, screw you, Louis. <laughs> Suddenly, lights go out. Come back on again. Huey Dewey chops away. <laughs> Killer in this room. In oh. this room? Yes, Killer is. <laughs> time that I saw her, I can clearly still recall. I was sailing on a cruise set sail for paradise. I remember thinking, who's this girl so elegant and tall? And long to get my hands upon her merchandise. The second time I saw her was at cocktail time that night. I was sipping a martini laced with gin. She was taking a large mouthful from a strawberry cream delight and had strawberry syrup dripping down her chin. From then I saw her many times whilst on our journey south. And every time I had to watch food entering her mouth. Each mealtime in the dining room I knew she would be there. I hear she went to every single sitting. And as days went by, she seemed to grow more portly in her chair. Her clothes seemed so much tighter, almost splitting. One day you'd never see her without something in her hand. A chocolate bar, a fizzy drink, or ice. At tea time, if she got there first, the thing I couldn't stand was finding she'd had every custard slice. I saw her sitting by the bar, her stool, her only prop. She had a large hangover and she hadn't touched a floor. Then came the fatal day when we pulled into our first port. In single file we walked the path to shore. As soon as she stepped on the deck, there was a violent crack. She disappeared beneath the wooden floor. There was a splash of water as our heroine fell in. She didn't see me, she just began to float. She lay there blowing water from her mouth in good long spots, looking like a whale wearing an ermine coat. Pearls not been found, although they've searched the seas from Greece to Thailand. There is a rumor that she set herself up as an island. <laughs> That excruciating girl I may be foolish But I'm sad about that girl So if by chance you're mountaineering Please allow me to suggest You check in case you fixed your tent Upon her chest <laughs> Excruciating girl, so sad that excruciating girl. So then, Amanda, what do you think of our new home? Well, could do with another bedroom, Rupert. Well, it's got 33. Yes, but I like even numbers. <laughs> this is quite a nice room. How about a little reproduction over the fireplace? Not so soon after lunch, darling. <laughs> a painting would be nice there, though, don't you think? Oh, this awful, horrid carpet. It will have to go. Oh, don't worry, my little file effects. I've engaged a carpet specialist to meet us. He should be here already. Oh, where is he? These traitors. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, you're under lazy, 
been dodgy, missus. Good Lord, who are you? Uh, Leon Shagpile. Um, <laughs> carpet fitting extraordinaire. Here's, here's my card. <laughs> what on earth are you doing, creeping around under my living room carpet? Ah, well, I took a wrong turn in under the kitchen line up. <laughs> Let's get down to business. Did you bring some samples? Uh, no, but if you've got a milk bottle, I can... Um... Carpet <laughs> samples? <laughs> oh, wow, ah, yes, sir. Uh, I've got a book here somewhere. They're under here somewhere. Here we are. Here they come. Here's the book. Now, you'll like these. First one is Joseph had his amazing technical dream carpet. It's brown. How about this one then? Hawaiian sunset. <laughs> yes, that's brown as well. Or maybe Rainbow Sonata. It's <laughs> brown. They're all brown. It's the last time I employ anyone from an advertisement in Titbits. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong, sir? Yes, all your carpets are exactly the same. No, they're not. They've got different names on the back, Luke. Look, they're all different. <laughs> all different. Hey, they are. Yeah, you'll love this one. Sinbad. That's magic, that. <laughs> 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 ridiculous. Stupid. Calm down, darling. Look, this one's rather nice, sort of grey and tufty. No, that's my cheese butty. got <laughs> <laughs> well, Look, I'm not happy with any of these. All right, then. If you're not happy, I know what we'll do. No problem, no problem. Sort you out, sir, cos I've got... I've got some more samples in the van. I'll go and get them for you right away. Good, if you would. I'd like to see those, and I'd like this carpet up immediately. What, right away? Yes, right now, please. Oh, suit yourself. I should have employed that person from H&E. &E. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> thank the many parishioners who have opened their doors to give accommodation to those people who are without a home. In fact, I'm pleased to say that I personally have found it possible to provide a family of 14 with somewhere to live. Howdy, partner. I'm looking for a fast gun. Is that fast enough for you? That was fast. You're hired. You won't regret this, mister. I <laughs> thought <laughs> 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 you were the dentist. I oh, did! <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me a laughing gas? <laughs> Three weeks ago, when I first brought him home, he was huge with his long, shaggy hair. Now he had quite a smell, and just like DHL, or that damn dog, he went everywhere. Well, he was such a sight, wasn't so good. I'd say walk, and he'd just roll over. It was his only trick. He was thick as a brick. Ah. So I call him the Irish Rover. <laughs> I thought he'd make a din if some bird was got in. He could gad all my stuff while I slept. Someone broke in me place, but he just licked his face and he showed him where my cash was kept. Boy, throw sticks in the park just for a lack. He would fetch him right back to his own. But one stick he brought back had a blind man attached. Oh, he was dead. was my Irish rover. Now I thought I would teach him to round up the sheep. I would whistle it, circle the flock. But then time and again I'd find him in the pen while the sheep were all running the mock. One day he came back, no squashed and flat, he'd been chasing a box on over. But what made it so daft was the damn car was parked. Oh, he was brainless, my Irish rover. <laughs>
Oh, that dog was a pratty, he was frightened of cats If he saw one, he'd run up a tree But I knew that he'd scowl, so his teeth gave a growl Just as soon as he clapped eyes on me One day I brought home a nice juicy bone Which he started to dig a big hole for But he'd done it so well that he buried himself oh, What a bone in my Irish rover Now it's quite plain to see He's as stupid as me of my Irish Bill Sorks and, and the lovely Nancy. You, you look charming today, my dear. Oh, Bill, I see you've brought Bullseye with you. He's uh, very quiet today, Bill. <laughs> He's dead faking. I've had him stuffed. <laughs> oh, what a shame. What killed him? Having him stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Bill, my dear, what the dickens have you been up to? Well, last night I rubbed 12 houses. I mugged four old gentlemen and I killed three sailors in a brawl at the Blind Beggar. Oh, sort of quiet sort of evening for you. <laughs> so, so, Fagin. Speaking of the Blind Beggar, I waited three hours for you last night. Now, where were you? Oh, well, you see, Bill, I was uh, confined to my sickbed. You see, I've got this terrible streaming cold and when I get a cold, boy, do I get a cold. <laughs> In fact, I've sent the boys out to get me something for it. Ah, here, this must be them now. <laughs> What's this? It's for your cold, Fagin. You feel dodgy, I told you to get a large size. <laughs> and who might this be? Oh, allow me to present Master Oliver Twist. This is the kindly old gentleman I was telling you about, Oliver. I I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. <laughs> My, what an enormous nose you have. It's not as big as your mouth, Oliver. <laughs> anyway, my dear, welcome to our humble dwelling. Goodness gracious, what a dumb. <laughs> you picked a real winner here, Dodger. He's just a bit outspoken, Fagin. It's at times like this that I wish that I were back up north. It's at times like this we all wish you were back up north. <laughs> anyway, my dear, relax. I'm sure you're going to be having a nice little time and you're going to enjoy yourself here, even although you are a smarmy little poof. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Allow me to introduce my friends. This is Mr. Socks and his dog Bullseye. Uh, pleased to meet you, Bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so cheeky, you rascal. I'm Bill Sykes' girlfriend. Yes, they, they call her Nancy. I expect they call you something similar. <laughs> <laughs> now then, dear Oliver, where are you from? I'm an orphan, sir. My mother died shortly after I was born. Yeah, suicide, I expect. <laughs> <laughs> For the past ten years, I've been locked in the workhouse. Oh, really? That happened to me once. He said the workhouse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they threw me out there because I asked for more gruel. And they set me to work with Mr. Sowerberry, the undertaker. But I ran away from his family's cruelty and hid myself on a vegetable cart bound for London. It took four long, tiring and difficult days. But eventually, I arrived in the city of London, starved and exhausted. Then, I chanced to meet Mr. Dodger here, who told me of your kindness and offered me lodgings with you and all the other boys. Has he finished? Good day, old fellow. The poor little chap's an orphan. No, Nancy, the poor chap's a boring little orphan. <laughs> Oliver, you want me to help you and so I shall. First, I shall teach you how to swim. But first, slip these couple of bricks in your pocket. <laughs> now listen to me, you wizened old bag of bones. Get that welt working, else I'll cut your throat from here to here. From where to where? From here to here. Oh, there to there. <laughs> Nancy, we're leaving. Right ho. Get off. <laughs> Don't it, Oliver. You would like to learn a trade. Oh, rather, sir. Engineering, perhaps, or navigation. That way, I could put my education to proper use and gain my master's certificate and get my own boat and travel the world. You could get with the only luck for all I care. <laughs> but first, I'm going to teach you a trade. You're going to learn the art of pock picketing. Pock picketing? <laughs> <laughs> Who 
when you're the glaze, you've got me pocketing when I should be pickpocketing. <laughs> now they don't even want to hear. Tell me, can you see something hanging out of my trousers? <laughs> Not from where I'm standing, sir. Well, can't you see the handkerchief? Oh, I can see that. Right, well, now you're going to learn how to pick a pocket or two. Show him, don't you? Right off, Faggy. Oliver, I want you to ignore everything you've just seen. Now, then, my dear, I want you to try and take this handkerchief from my pocket without me noticing. <laughs> wonderful, Oliver, wonderful! You're a natural if ever I saw one. Yes. Now tell me something, tell me something, my dear. Have you ever been up before the magistrate? I, I don't know, sir. What time does he get up? Never mind the old chaps! <laughs> Have you been before the beak? Only yours, sir. <laughs> what he's trying to say is have you ever been nabbed by the peelers? <laughs> Grabbed by the rosers. <laughs> Picked up by the bogeys. <laughs> uh, how horrid! Oh, I'll swing for him, I swear I will. Ah, oh, Bill, Bill, back so soon. A word in your ear, Fagin. Wonderful news, wonderful news, Oliver. Mr Sykes here has just found your uncle, your rich uncle. That means you'll be able to dine with him and live with him. You'll be able to eat steak and pheasant and roast suckling pig. But I like ghoul, sir. You'll be able to travel in fine carriages and wear nice clothes. I, I like these clothes, sir. Don't you today get a bang on the head on his way up here? I want to stay with you, sir. But you can't! I'd be really contented. Don't beg on it. I'll live happily ever after. No, you won't! Besides, <laughs> Mr. Snoz, I'm staying. <laughs> In fact, I'm so happy, I could sing. Oh, my God! <laughs> There's only one thing we could do. What's that? Quick, go get that man. What? The kid's uncle? No, the taxidermist has stuffed bullseye. <laughs> Tell him we've got a last job on. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.